my name is Pedro Oliveira. I'm originally from Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. I'm 30 years old and I moved to the United States in 2014 to pursue my college career. I went to Iowa, spent two years in Iowa in a community college, moved to Charlotte, North Carolina to pursue my psychology degree at Queens, where I graduated in 2018. Where is home for you right now? At this point, I'll say the home is here in, the, in Charlotte because I have my wife um, over here. We are already making plans of purchasing a house and set our roots here in Charlotte. So at this point, I'll say I'll call Charlotte my home. Describe your experience during the last two years and more of the COVID-19 pandemic. That were very confusing three years because of COVID. Um, the pandemic changed a lot about my perspective of life. It changed a lot what I could or could not do. Um, I wasn't able to visit my family back in Brazil since 2019. So that's something that has changed a lot. My way to perceive family and as the question previously, then my way to perceive home. Um, it also was very confusing at first in terms of work-wise because making all these transitions to remote work was something that was very new for me. I wasn't used to that. So that definitely changed my perspective in terms of time and how important time it is for me and how important it is to have a very healthy work-life balance. And the last thing that I would say changed a lot for me for the past three years was because I was in a process of getting my visa renewed and the pandemic delayed the process significantly which was the main reason why I wasn't able to go back to Brazil up to now, which is the reason why I haven't been able to get to know different countries, learn different languages, which are things that, that I'm very passionate about. So those are the main impacts for the past three years that changed my life when it comes to COVID-19. What do you remember of the early days? What did you do during the lockdown? To be super honest, and I know that my sounds a little bit bad, the first couple of weeks of the lockdown were one of the best weeks for me. I thought it was just amazing because we were not, we didn't really know how serious COVID was. So we really felt just like some break from work and there was nobody outside. So we didn't really feel like we had to do anything. So me and my wife, we started to do things like yoga, meditation, we started to sometimes go out uh, close to nature because we were avoiding people and it was beautiful to see the nature blooming like it did. For instance, where my parents live back home, there was a beach that nobody ever goes because it's very polluted by boats. And after two weeks of lockdown, there was turtles uh, swimming around and seeing how nature can regenerate themselves uh, if we don't influence as much was great. So I would say the first three weeks, of pandemic was amazing because we thought it would just be like a one month kind of thing and then everything would be normal. But then after that, we started realizing how serious it was. Have your friendship or family relationship changed during the pandemic? 100%. Uh, I think it made me closer to the friends, to my actual friends, you know, to put it this way. Because since we were avoiding being surrounded by a lot of people, I was also being very selective with which kind of people I'm gonna hang out with. So the people that I chose to hang out with were the people that I felt confident they were taking the precautions, were people that knew were also avoiding other people. So we really bonded with the ones that were closer and kind of puts me further away from the world, for the ones that, that was not too close. And when it comes to family, my personal experience was not very good because I didn't, well, I wasn't able to visit my family uh, in 2020, which was something that I had planned for and because of COVID-19, the airport's been closed. So it definitely affect my relationship with my family back home, which made my mom particularly a little bit more, um, miss me a little bit more and feel a little bit lonely, which was a bit of a challenge. How has your life changed since March 2020? Every single way, I would say. The fact the lockdown made me start practicing, practicing different activities such as yoga meditation, which changed a lot of my perspective of religion, my perspective about well-being, my perspective about work. Um, on the past three years also, the COVID, the, the lockdown, um, I know it doesn't sound correct to say, but it really helped me grow my business because I have a business that has to do with private soccer sessions. And during the lockdown, all the clubs were out of season, the schools were closed, so the parents were looking for the kids to do some activity. And my business offered a one-on-one -on -one training, which was something that was great because people saw like not training because just one person with another. So it really helped me build what now is, you know, my 
my main source of income and what makes me and my wife being able to be looking for a place to buy. So it definitely affects a lot. What did you learn from your own personal experience? I learned that time, that we are not in control of anything. You know, it's something like COVID that has absolutely no, um, something that we can definitely not control at all. Something that just happened and how vulnerable we are and how our daily life can be changed by something that's totally out of control. So it made me a little bit more humble in terms of how much I can actually influence my own life. What do you think our future will look like? I think the future, uh, even though COVID, I'm saying that with all the respect to the people who lost family members, I personally lost my father for COVID, but I believe that COVID changed the way that people see time and work especially and make them give much more value to friendships and actual relationships. So I see the future being really good. I think COVID was very important and it's going to make us have a much better level of awareness uh, of what is actually good for us and what actually matter. Okay, tell me more about you and your family. Uh, well, as I mentioned before, I'm from Brazil. My family, I live with, I, when I was in Brazil, I used to live with my mom and my stepdad. And um, both of my parents, um, they're very low-key people. We were always very into camping, hiking, and I think that shaped a lot the way I am now. I'm a kind of person I'm always looking to build a healthy relationship. I was trying to avoid toxic relationship. I'm someone that I'm always trying to find myself as well. I'm, uh, I'm in constant search for different explanations and different ways to see life. So I'll say myself, I'll call myself as a very curious person, curious about my own, curious about what is above us in a more spiritual sense. And that's how I'll define myself for the most part. So Pedro, tell me more about your business. So my business is called P3 Soccer Lab. Uh, P3 stands for the three big P's that I consider in my life, which is passion, preparation, performance, and of course, when it comes to, to sports. Um, P3 started uh, in 2020 when I was doing a lot of private sessions around Charlotte and the surrounding areas. And then at some point, I was having too many kids that I couldn't accommodate in my time. So I was lucky to have a friend of mine called Juan Carlos come into town. Uh, he does his PhD at Clemson and he moved to Charlotte just because of the COVID um, because Clemson also had a lockdown. So we ended up meeting and talking about our lives, kind of dating each other. And then I mentioned to him that I was starting this program that was called P3 Soccer Lab that I was running into the problem of having too many kids to coach and I was by myself and he saw my Instagram page, my website, and he saw that there was a very good potential for the business, for that to actually be a business very soon. So he come to me and we had a little conversation and we decided to get to, to merge forces and uh, he will be helping me more on the logistics, on the business and actually creating and making everything more standardized while I was in charge of retaining more clients for us to grow. And then his girlfriend, Sydney, also joined by creating, updating our website, um, making our social media better, creating a whole booking system to get paid online with credit card, because before then we were just accepting cash. So that was how it started. And then we started with private sessions only and very quickly that turned into offering small group sessions around the city, which was very good for our business. And then after about a year, we were able to start renting places and run things like camps, like um, soccer clinics, um, soccer camps performance as well, merging with other sports. So that was, um, that was how the business started. And um, our goal is to eventually replicate what we did with soccer with other sports by finding someone that have that believe in the idea and might want to be a business owner and then this person might start running a p3 maybe lacrosse maybe tennis or whatever we decide to do later um, but that's a little bit about the business um, we have this very strong idea that our coaches and our program might have might be always stimulating for the kids and always encouraging them to do their best selves and also we make sure that all of our coaches are passionate when they're coaching because we believe that players are gonna match the level of passion. Uh, one thing that me and my partner decide that we did not want from day one is to have coaches that will be just watching the kids doing whatever they're doing. 
Um, that's the main reason why we only hire coaches that have played soccer in college level or professional level. Because those many of the kids in Charlotte that play soccer, they like a reference. They like, they like having coaches and people that have actually played the game. So that's the premise that we come with. And I believe that this factor really put us uh, in a different level from our competition. And uh, I truly hope that we can keep having the quality of coaches we have to keep providing the best soccer service in Charlotte. And how was being married during the COVID time? Was a was a very interesting experience, uh, to say the least, because um, there was a lot of people that were getting married uh, during COVID, and at the same time, a lot of people getting divorced because they finally got to be with each other all the time, and that was a little bit of a burden for the people that haven't realized how long they spent uh, apart. Um, to be honest, for me, it was very good experience. Uh, I believe it was great. It helped me bond with my wife more and more. Um, it was a little bit annoying in a sense which people started to think that I got married just because of COVID or just because of my visa status because it kind of matched the timing. Um, that's something that I understand is superficial and not very important but unfortunately there's a lot of people that believe that I got married because I got bored uh, on the pandemic which is just not true but whatever people think uh, my experience being married during COVID was great. Me and my wife were able to build um, new lifestyle together. We were able to get to know each other more. We were able to spend a lot of time with each other and we're still together. So I guess that was a good way to strengthen our relationship and make sure that we can stay together long term because it's very normal to see people getting out of college, getting married and start working nonstop. And they maybe just see each other once, two hours at night time, and then live like that for like years, years. And then eventually when they have a kid or someone retired, they, you know, spend more time together. There's a lot of people, about, a lot of things about their partner that you just don't know because they haven't spent that time together. So having that in the beginning of my marriage, I believe it was very important. It could have been a problem if you, you know, figured it out that, well, I don't think we can do this, but it ended up being a blast because it really create a very firm and strong foundation for, for our relationship. So how stay away from home affect uh, your identity? Uh, to be honest, it affects drastically. Um, I, have I feel like I have changed so much on the last three years, but I've, all these changes happen here in the United States and not home. So uh, in many situations, I feel like I'm gonna whenever I go back to visit, that I'm gonna feel like a foreigner in my own land, in my own place, because I have changed completely my religious view, I have changed completely my political views, I have changed completely the way I perceive work and everything for the past three, four years. I believe that was the time that I had the biggest growth in a, in a way, and I do think that there's a lot of things that I'm gonna feel strange about when I go back to Brazil. Maybe not the very big things, important things in life, but the little things in your lifestyle. Like for instance, I'm a person that I'm always on time and I know Brazilians usually are not. So when I'm gonna go out with my friend, you know, and gets there at like 8 p.m., I'm gonna be there at 7.50, I'm gonna be waiting for 45 minutes. So little things like that, things gonna burden me, little things like, no, here I know that everything I try to do in terms of getting things done, run errands, I can do on the same day. So if I need to get my my driver's license renewed, I will do that one day. If I need to solve a problem with my credit card, it's gonna call, it's gonna happen. Now in Brazil, it's not like that. It's a whole process, a whole bureaucracy. So I believe I'm gonna be a little bit annoyed and I have this little fear to be considered like, oh, you like, you like, you know, like kind of cocky now or you think you're better than us, which is not the truth, it's just because there's some things here that I like that I've become accustomed with. And uh, I believe that I'm gonna have a little bit of a hesitation when I go back home. And that has to do a little bit of the identity. I think my way, the Pedro right now is not the same Pedro as it was before, uh, even coming here at all, but especially before COVID, because during, before COVID, I was able to go home twice a year. So it, I didn't lose much my Brazilian way to be, but now it's been three years that I haven't, four years that I haven't got home. So it does make a bigger difference. So I'm a little bit, uh, I, I, did, I do think it affects a little bit my identity. Of course, I still identify as Brazilian. I still hold a lot of the Brazilian culture. I actually started reading more about Brazilian culture, religion, and all that stuff once I was here. But 
the everyday life is something that worries a little bit about it. And I think I'm, I'm a different person in that way. I just used Queens for a few reasons. The first reason was because I love the campus. I think campus was amazing. It was beautiful. Um, second, because I was invited to, to join the soccer team and I really enjoyed the coach methodology. I really enjoyed the teammates that I met when I came for my visit. But one of the most important things for Queens is that for me choosing Queens is because they seem to be very strong about diversity and inclusion. And uh, as a black Latino, I felt very comfortable to be coming to a, a school where they have a whole program in diversity and inclusion, where they had a lot of international uh, students. So it made me feel more at home, even though I wasn't at home. So that was one of the main, that was, that, was, that was actually the main reason why I decided to come to Queens instead of the other offers that I had um, before moving to Charlotte. What do you see yourself in five years? Well, hopefully with a very stable financial life. Uh, I'm really been working towards have stability on my finances. Uh, I want to have my own house. I have to own a property. I want to be in a place where I can have my first kid. Hopefully in five years from now, I'll have one. My goal is to have a kid in five years from now, four years from now, so kind of around the same time frame. Um, I see myself being more connected to all the things I read about, all this philosophy, religious book I read about, this um, you know, um, meditation, yoga, I'm really into reading all that, and I believe in five years from now, I'm gonna be able to actually practice in a more daily basis all the things that I'm doing now in theory. Uh, I see myself being able to have my parents closer, not necessarily living here in Charlotte, but at least being able to go visit much more frequently and have them coming, especially if, we, if I have a kid in, during this time. I want my parents to be close. I want my son or daughter to be really close to their grandparents from the day one, because there's a lot of things that can be missing in the first two years if they don't have contact with their grandparents. And I want my parents to be close to them, especially because they have been far away from me for a long time. So I think that something is going to be very important for them. Uh, and lastly, I would say five years from now, I hope to be in a position where I can keep, in terms of work, uh, doing what I love. That I can keep my business or expand my business or create a new business, but doing something that I love and that I want to keep on doing. One of the biggest nightmares I have is not do well on my business now and having to give it up and start working on something that doesn't bring me value, that doesn't mean anything for me. It would be great to work in a bank and make a three figure, but I think I'll feel miserable every day if that was my profession. And uh, when it comes to five years from now, you're talking about not having a house, having a kid, and that all that is a lot of expenses. So I see myself not working at something that's gonna bring me nothing. I wanted to keep doing things that has meaning for me. So that's what I see myself. Hopefully business is gonna do well and the family is gonna be closer and I will be able to practice the things that I've been reading about. Perfect, thanks Pedro.